What is going on you guys, this is TechHD coming at you with a brand new video and today we are going to be doing a comparison video. So if you guys saw in my last week's video, I made an unboxing and review of the Scarlet Solo Studio Pack 3rd generation and in that video I said that I own the 1st gen and I personally own the 2nd gen at the moment and so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be comparing the 2nd generation versus the 3rd generation. We're going to be talking about you know all the features that they have, similarities and some things that, uh, that are different of course and then we're gonna be doing some audio tests you know so you guys can hear the raw audio if you guys actually hear a difference or not we're gonna be covering the headphones the audio interface as well as the microphone we're not gonna be covering the cable you know the cable is the same it's a regular XLR cable so nothing crazy there and like I said we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of each of them and then we're gonna be seeing which one is worth for you guys like this like is the second gen good enough for you guys or do you guys want to spend that extra money and go for the third generation? So before we get into the video, I just want to quickly talk about the price points between the second gen and the third gen. So right now on Amazon, the second gen is going for 185, whereas the third gen is going for 220. So that is a pretty big jump, you know, in price points. As far as everything else, we're going to be taking a look at that. So the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at are the microphones themselves because they have the least amount of difference compared to the entire pack. Uh, on the left one is the second gen and on my right is the third gen. So really the only difference is the appearance wise. This is a little bit taller, the third generation and just a little bit different. But they both are matte black finishes with red accents, one on the top and one on the bottom. You know, they both take XLR inputs. So that's one of the you know, major difference is really just the appearance a little bit, a little bit taller on the third generation. They're both cardioid condenser microphones. So other than that, there's really nothing different between uh, the second gen and the third gen, but we're gonna be taking a look at the audio uh, in a bit as well. Now, taking a look at the devices that has the main differences are the audio interfaces. So this one is the second gen, where this one is the third gen. I'm gonna be talking about a little bit of the uh, comparisons, you know, similarities, and then the difference. So one of the major difference that I wanna point out is that the third gen is actually smaller, uh, just a little bit compared to the second gen. So you can see, that this one in width is about a little bit shorter or in depth is a little bit shorter, but pretty much length they're about the same and height level they're about the same. But as far as depth, this one is a little bit uh, shorter, which is interesting. So it's a lot better when it comes to portability and traveling. Uh, as far as the finish goes, you know, they have, this one has a darker red, this one's a lighter red, nothing really crazy there. As far as the build quality goes, they are both very nice build qualities. That's the, one of the things that I really like about Focusrite and their audio interfaces. They are very nice indeed. One of the major things that I do want to point out is that the second gen has more of a plastic on the back and the front. So on the back piece, this tends to move a little bit throughout time. So this one is a little bit cheaper in the build quality compared to the third generation. So that's one of the things that they all improved. Now, one of the things that I do not like about the third generation, I like how sleek and modern it looks. I just don't like how it has a glossy finish because if you guys can see in the camera, this thing is getting so much fingerprints and dust. It's just honestly crazy. So that's one of the major things that I did not like about the third gen. I like how it looks though. It looks very modern. Just it's a glossy finish instead of a matte finish. I honestly prefer the matte finish on the second gen. Now if they implemented a really dark black and a matte finish, then I would honestly love it. But other than that, there's nothing really crazy uh, difference right there. Now, as far as the inputs, they both have uh, XLR inputs. They both have the gain knob. They both have the other gain knob for the instruments. They got an instrument button, whereas this one is a switch. That's one of the major things. And then the monitoring knobs, as well as a direct monitor button, whereas this one is a switch as well. And then the input for headphones when it comes to listening to the audio and monitoring the audio as well. One of the major things is that uh, the 48 volt phantom power, you know, that one's a button. This one's also a button, but we got the air circuit button on the third generation. So this one provides you with cleaner, higher, like signal quality. And if you guys did not see the last video of doing the audio test, I'll have it linked down in the description below so that you guys can go check that out. But pretty much that is the main difference when it comes to the front. You know, everything is very similar, just the looks and appearance 
and then taking a look at the back is the main difference over here. So we got a USB 2.0 input, whereas this one is now Type-C. So that is one of the major things is that this now accepts Type-C input, which is really nice, of course. Uh, getting USB type uh, USB 2.0, like Type-B uh, cables is a little bit difficult to find, unlike Type-C. So if you guys want to get a longer cable, like for me, then this is so much easier to find than USB 2.0 Type-B. As well as the line outputs, we got RCA outputs, and these are unbalanced, whereas these are TRS uh, outputs, and these are balanced signals. So balance is much better than unbalanced. You know, they are stronger, cleaner signals, so they are less likely to have uh, background noise or hissing, you know, when it comes to connecting it to some speakers or anything like that, whereas RCAs are most, most likely gonna have some extra humming or hissing by the cables or by the power connection or anything really. So balance is so much better, TRS is so much better than unbalanced, so that is one of the major things about it. Now, taking a look at similarities when it comes to the spec wise, these both do 192 kilohertz at 24 bit, which is very nice, you know? And other than that, there's really nothing else different between the audio interfaces, but, you know, very similar indeed, just a couple of things that are have been improved, like the outputs of power, as well as the outputs to connect to a pair of speakers, the air button, you know, the air button feature, and all the other, you know, buttons, they're all buttons instead of switches, and they all have indicated lights, so they light up instead of it just being a switch. So that's one of the major things. So if you guys didn't see the video, the direct monitor button is like lights up, as well as the 48 volt phantom power light lights up, as well as the air button lights up, and the uh, insta button lights up as well. So a little bit more modern. I like that personally. I just wish that these like the front and the back was not glossy. I wish it was a, an all deep black, you know, color, but in a matte finish. I think that would look much better. And the last thing that we're gonna be taking a look at from the studio pack are the headphones. So these are the HP 60 headphones. This is the Mark II, whereas this one is the Mark III. Major differences when it comes to the headphones. That's one of the things that they really uh, worked on uh, when it came to the headphones. So one of the major things is when it comes to the headbands, the headband on the second generation is, you know, there's no padding or anything like that. It's just a little bit of a fake leather feel. And the adjustment is just, you put this on your head and it'll adjust for you automatically. You know, I kind of like that, but I didn't like how there was no padding or anything. So throughout time, it did start to bother. But at the same time, these were very lightweight. So then it wasn't that much of an issue but I do like the adjustment, how it's just automatic, you know, it just automatically adjusts to any type of head. I just wish that there was a little bit more padding. As far as the cables, they're all, you know, nice and hidden and secured through the wires over here, which I li really liked. And the ear cups, you know, these are very large circular ear cups. I like them. They have a pleather feel, you know, of the ear cups. Very nice, comfortable headphones, and the cables are unfortunately attached. They're not detachable or anything like that, and it's a very long cable, so very good. And then they have the, you know, the quarter inch jack adapter where you can unscrew it and make it into a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack. And then taking a look at the third generation, these are so much different. So one of the things is that these feel much lighter, which I like, but at the same time, I feel like that the build quality is not there compared to the second generation. I feel like the second gen headphones have a better build quality in my opinion. I feel like the plastic is a lot more cheaper. Um, I do like that it's lightweight, but at the same time, the build quality isn't really there. I like the second gen. Um, the headband is so much better, much more comfortable. You know, these actually have a little bit of a cushion feel, which I like. And one of the things is they have the actual adjustment piece. So you do have to adjust this to if you're wearing a hat, if you're not, or, you know, it's not gonna automatically adjust for you. And then we have a number from one to seven. So you can know which number is uh, for you, whether you're wearing a hat or not. So for me, my head size is actually at five on both sides. And then when I'm wearing a hat, it's all the way at the end. So that's one of the major things. One of the major things are the ear cups. Now these are so much softer, pleather feel. You know, they're very, very soft compared to the second gens. The second gens are still a little bit more firm compared to the third gens. These are so much more soft and I really like it. Comfort level is so much better. One of the things I don't like is how the ear cup is a little bit smaller compared to the to the second gen so if I were to grab the second gen you guys could see 
a pretty big difference when it comes to the ear cup size. So basically my ear touches the edges of the ear cup and then throughout time it's, it starts to bother me so where I have to adjust my head a little bit whereas these I had no problem whatsoever um, but that is one of the major things now comfort of these headphones are so much better but as far as the build quality uh, I don't personally like the build quality that much I like the appearance I like the comfort but the build quality I feel like they're a little bit cheaper compared to the second gens and then you still got the same cable you know same length still not detachable you still got the quarter inch jack adapter that could be turned into a 3.5 millimeter uh, one of the things i do not like about this headphone is how this cable is completely exposed so that's one of the major things i didn't like about it is how these this cable is completely exposed so like if you accidentally pull it too much or something were to happen and this piece just rips you know that is it so one of the ear cups would be failing and you have to get a whole different pair of headphones so that's one of the things these are not very secure whatsoever when it comes to the wiring whereas the second gens you can't even see where the wiring is they're hidden in this uh, rubber you know thick rubber piece so these are not gonna break whatsoever uh, whereas these are most likely to so now that we've taken a look at the microphone as well as the audio interface and the headphones, we're going to be doing a couple of sound tests. So now we're going to be doing some raw audio uh, connecting to my laptop and I'm going to be showing you guys the raw audio of it. I'm going to be using the headphones as well as the audio interfaces and we're going to be seeing how they perform. Alright you guys, so the first audio that we're going to be testing out is the Focusrite Scarlett Solo Studio Pack 2nd Generation. So you can see right here that I got the CM25 Mark II microphone, I got the audio interface as well as I have the XLR cable and I'm using the HP16 Mark II. And so that is all plugged into my laptop and you guys are hearing the raw audio right now. So basically I'm using Adobe Audition to capture the audio I have at about pretty much the gain knob at like about 60% I am using the direct monitoring to monitor how I sound that is about at 50 60% as well and then with that I am getting at like around negative 18 to negative 12 decibels which is perfectly fine I'm not clipping I'm not peaking anything like that and then when it comes to complete silence I am literally at like around negative 55 decibels which is where I want to be now I didn't want to put a mic foam or anything because it doesn't come with that so that's one of the things that I want to test out because I used the mic foam on my last video and most of you guys even though I do recommend it uh, most of you guys are not gonna have it when you guys first get it so I do recommend a mic foam or at least a pop filter to remove all the plosives so the B's and the P's whenever I am pretty much speaking and so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below you guys are hearing the raw audio of it I'm doing no editing whatsoever I'm just editing uh, recording it on Adobe Audition and then uh, editing it in post to sync up the audio with the video so let me know what you guys think and now let's move on to the third generation okay you guys so we now switched over to the third generation and you guys are hearing it right now this is the raw audio of it I switched the audio interface to the third gen the CM25 Mark III microphone and I'm using the HP60 Mark III's for the monitoring and I am using Adobe Audition everything is pretty much the same the uh, gain is set like around 60 65 same thing as well as the monitoring knob is set to 60 65 and I'm using 48 volt phantom power same thing as I did before I'm using the same XLR cable the only thing different is the cable because it's type C to type A and so I'm using Adobe Audition to edit the to record the audio and with that I am I edit it and put it in post to sync up the uh, audio with the video and so with that you guys are hearing the raw audio of it I have it at like around negative 55 when it's complete silence and my voice is going like around negative 18 to negative 12 decibels now one of the things that I didn't tell you guys in the last part of it is that I am recording both of the audios at 192 kilohertz at 24 bit and with that I have the buffer size at like around 128 so you know everything is pretty much the same you know not one of them supports only 96 kilohertz they both support 192 kilohertz which is really good and so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below like I said raw audio of it I honestly one of the first things I noticed is that the latency with using the monitoring is a lot lower and then with that not only that but the audio sounds a little bit cleaner in my opinion so right now you guys are hearing the raw audio of that and one of the things like I said before is that they have the air functionality so you're gonna be hearing that as well once I press this button right here 
Okay, so now I press the button, and so with that, you guys are hearing the raw audio of it with the air functionality. And by the way, I start to hear an immediate difference in the in the headphones. And with that, I hear a little bit more higher end boosted, and it sounds with the vocals a little bit more clear. Very interesting. And like I said, I'm not using a microphone or anything like that. And I do have the microphone set off to my left side a little bit, angled at like a 45 degree so that it doesn't get so much of my breathing, of me constantly breathing and any of my breath hitting the microphone directly. And so with that, let me know what you guys think. If you guys prefer the air functionality, if you guys prefer without it, or if you guys even prefer the second generation, if that one sounds a lot cleaner, I do recommend using headphones. But there you guys have it. So there you guys have it. That has been my comparison video of the Focusrite Scarlett Solo Studio Pack Gen 2 versus Gen 3. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Honestly, for the price, the Gen 2 would be good enough for most of you guys that just want to do voiceovers, that just wants to record audio, get better audio quality, uh, that wants to use it for streaming or podcasting, anything like that. I think the Gen, Gen 2 is going to be perfect for you guys. I don't think you guys really need to go to the third generation, you know. But honestly, I like some of the things that the third gen provides you. So the air functionality that the third gen has is so much better. I really like that feature as well as when it comes to the direct monitoring and the latency. It is so much better on the third generation. Like you could honestly hear that difference between uh, when I was recording and doing some tests of the second gen and the third gen. I could really hear so little latency and sometimes in the third gen like i said before when i compared the third uh, when i compared the second gen and the first gen the latency was a night and day difference now it's the same thing with the third gen as well so i could hear a little bit of a delay on the second gen but you know it wasn't so annoying and it didn't bother me when it came to doing voiceovers or recording the third generation is just a whole different level. That thing is honestly crazy. And the functionalities that they provide you is very similar. And microphones are pretty much exactly the same. So if you guys are artists, musicianists, you know, that wants to do covers or anything when it comes to music and stuff like that, I think the third gen is going to be more for you guys. One, the air functionality is mainly in the Claret version, which is much more expensive. So the fact that they implement it in the Focusrite uh, generation is really cool. And so with that, the air functionality will be a game changer for those of you guys that wants to uh, do music and covers and stuff like that, as well as the direct monitoring is so much better. I think it's going to be better for those of you guys that are going to be doing voiceovers or covers and stuff like that. But for everyday consumers, honestly, for the price 185, um, the second gen is good enough for you guys. It's good enough for me. I honestly, what I would do is since I already have the second gen, I would personally just upgrade the audio interfaces because that's where that's just the main difference really. I don't really care about the headphones. I could always get better headphones and the microphone is pretty much the same thing. I could always just go and get the third gen audio audio interface and not have and just replace the second gen. So that's the main thing and with that it's a lot cheaper, you know. So if you guys already have a microphone that you guys really love, if you guys already use headphones that you really love, and but you are using the second gen audio interface or an older other branded uh, audio interface I just I would recommend just upgrading to the third gen audio interface and you will get pretty much the same functionalities but there you guys have it hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know down in the comments below on what you guys thought about it and if you guys do have any questions let me know as well because I would love to hear you guys feedback on what you guys think of the second gen and the third gen when I heard it back there was not that much of a difference there was much more of a difference in the air but overall it was very very similar but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and if you guys do have any questions anything specific that I didn't cover and that you guys want to know as well let me know down in the comments and I will try to answer them but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever i upload a new video follow me on twitter youtube instagram and twitch as always take hd i'll catch you guys in the next video peace